Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from the Airbus A320 Aerotask Flight Simulator here in Munich, Germany. In today's video, we'll be looking at the famous fly-by-wire system. How does it work? Who introduced it? Its advantages and disadvantages. So ready to do some wiring and let's get started. <laughs> Juliet Abbey, left on hotel, left on four left. You're in sequence behind the competition ahead, the tower's 23.9. No, this is not an airplane, but my car's engine. What I want to demonstrate here is the mechanical linkage between the gas pedal and the carburetor. If you push and pull on this lever, I'm moving the gas pedal from back here, showing there is a direct link or a cable between the two of them. The same construction applies with the flight controls in the little Piper or Cessna. As you move the yoke from left to right and to front and back, cables and pulleys move your flight controls respectively. Now this type of flight control architecture can not only be found in smaller general aviation planes, but also in airliners such as the Boeing 737 and the 747 and many more. But since the 1930s, Engineers have been testing and developing an entirely new flight control architecture which not only shed a lot of weight but more importantly increased flight safety dramatically and they named it Fly By Wire. So it's no surprise that I'm sitting in an Airbus A320 today as Airbus is very well known for being a big developer and contributor to the Fly By Wire technology. Okay, let's have a look at how the system actually works. So the best known feature of the Airbus Fly-by-Wire system is the side stick. Now I did a whole video on the side stick, which you might wanna check out right here. So by moving the side stick, you actually move mechanical levers and dampers, which sit below the side stick, and this movement gets converted into a digital signal. Okay. Let's say we were to make a left turn. Our left turn digital signal then runs by wire to a set of seven flight control computers. The first one is the ELAC-1, which stands for Elevator and Aileron Computer. ELAC-2 acts as a backup in case ELAC-1 fails. So the ELAC-1 checks the received digital signal before sending it off to the flight control surfaces. What I mean by checking the signal, you'll see in a minute. So from ELAC, our left turn digital signal then yet again runs through a wire or electric cable to one of the hydraulic actuators on the left hand aileron and on the right hand aileron, where our digital signal is then converted into a mechanical force moving the left hand aileron upwards and the right hand aileron downwards. Does that make sense so far? But hold that thought. Let's quickly repeat this maneuver and let's make a left hand turn in a little Cessna and closely monitor the pitch, the vertical speed indicator and the slip indicator. Pause the video and guess what will happen. Okay, initiating the turn and as you see, I'm instantly losing altitude and the ball of my slip indicator is not centered. Now this not just happens in the little Cessna, this is due to aerodynamics and physics and happens with every plane. So what do I have to do to counteract? Obviously I have to pitch up and apply left rudder in order to fly a standard rate turn. Okay, let's do the same thing one more time in the Airbus using fly-by-wire. Now I'm going to demonstrate this turn by using just two fingers. This isn't how you're supposed to hold and fly with the side stick, but just for demonstration purposes. I am banking 30 degrees by just rolling the plane with the ailerons to the left. Now closely monitor the vertical speed on the right-hand side of the PFD and the pitch attitude. As you can see, no indication of descent nor climb. Therefore, no pitch adjustments either. Welcome to the world of fly-by-wire. Now, as mentioned before, the Airbus A220 has seven flight control computers. Well, technically it's nine. The other two control the flaps and slats. So the digital signal 
we've created with the side stick not just goes into the elevator aileron computer one or two but also into the sec one two or three the spoiler elevator computer deploying the spoilers to counteract for your and actuating the elevator to counteract the descent and one further computer the fac one or two the flight augmentation computer keeps the slip indicator in the middle by applying some left rudder input during the turn it even applies a little thrust to maintain the speed please don't mistake this for the autopilot that's a whole other system which yet again uses the fly-by-wire system but currently we are flying manually and the fly-by-wire system plus the flight control computers help you to fly a controlled turn now the same applies for pitch if you pull back on the side stick momentarily and let go of it the fly-by-wire system will send the process signals from the flight control computers to the elevator actuators they move the elevator upwards the plane climbs then elac and sec will trim the horizontal stabilizer and it will maintain that pitch and speed if the auto thrust is engaged with a set climb speed or a selected speed until reaching a calculated limit so let's go back to our mechanical plane if you pitch up in a Cessna you start climbing you then have to manually add some power if you want to maintain your speed and once you let go of the flight controls the plane levels off again that's the normal or natural tendency of a plane. Okay, now that we have a basic understanding of the fly-by-wire system, let's talk about the pros and cons of this system. Now, one of the two big advantages of fly-by-wire is the weight saving and the increased flight safety. Weight saving as the actual wire leading to the hydraulic actuators is lighter than the cable that has to go around on countless pulleys until it actually reaches the actuator. Also, the flight control surfaces, such as the rudder, can be built smaller, making the plane slightly unstable, so-called relaxed stability but the flight control computers then compensate for this instability. This is well known with the Eurofighter as an example. The plane itself is so unstable in the air that the flight control computers constantly have to compensate and correct for the instability, but at the same time making it incredibly agile. It increases flight safety enormously. In normal law, which is an Airbus terminology, you cannot stall overspeed spin or overbank the airplane why not you may ask now every input made by the pilot is checked by the flight control computers before it's being transmitted to the flight control surfaces so if any of the flight control computer senses this input is too much or unsafe it will interfere with the pilot's input and actively takes over to keep the plane in a safe flight attitude. Another minor but cost-effective advantage is fuel saving during flight. Now, as the flight computers are monitoring the entire aerodynamic flight envelope, they make sure to fly coordinate turns, as mentioned before, therefore reducing unwanted drag, or during straight and level flight, make sure the plane is not oscillating, therefore increasing the overall efficiency. Another great advantage is maintenance. It's much less time intense and cost saving to maintain a fly-by-wire plane. And lastly, reduced workload for the pilots. Hands down, it is easier to fly an Airbus than a Boeing. I can say that because I've flown both in real life, not in a sim. Now don't judge either manufacturer here if you haven't flown both in real life. Okay, let's look at the disadvantages. Now, as a pilot, you have to know what you're doing, meaning as there is more automation and protection laws involved in fly-by-wire planes, you need to understand what the automation is doing and why. Which brings me to the second disadvantage. Fly-by-wire systems and their multiple computers can be very complex. Also, fly-by-wire planes are often more expensive than planes with mechanical flight controls. And in case the fly-by-wire system fails, means of backups 
sort of multiple reserve computers and even mechanical cables need to be installed and the pilots need to be trained for such a situation. And lastly, this is a big one, in my opinion at least, most fly-by-wire planes don't have force feedback on their flight controls, side stick or yoke. When I fly the Boeing 747, I can feel what the plane is doing, where she's wanting to go and what I need to do to counteract that. By all means, I love Airbus and I highly respect all my colleagues who fly the beautiful machines of Airbus. But I want to say you are more connected with the plane when flying a Boeing. Please, all former Boeing, now Airbus pilots, may comment on my statement. <laughs> But there is one rumor I do want to clarify because many people think that Airbus engineers were the ones who invented and developed the fly-by-wire system. Well, that is, sorry to say, not entirely correct because the first plane with servo-electrically operated control surfaces, which is comparable to the flight control movements of a model airplane, were tested in the 1930s by Russian engineers of Tupolev on their ANT-20. As the entire plane was made out of a steel frame and sheet metal, they had a weight issue, so wires and electric servos shed at least some weight. Further developments were made 30 years later on the Luna landing training vehicle, which Neil Armstrong famously crashed in May 1968. Then the first military plane with full fly-by-wire system was the Avro Arrow Interceptor, which was even controllable from the ground, needing no pilot. And the first series production commercial airliner to be fitted with the fly-by-wire system, including mechanical backup and force feedback on the control yoke was, drum roll please, she's been a pioneer for decades in the aviation world, no surprises, as always, Concorde. Now, once the Concorde program was over and Aerospatiale and other airplane manufacturers merged to become Airbus, Airbus realized this fly-by-wire system is pretty great. <laughs> they then enhanced it to the now all digital fly-by-wire system and got it approved by the authorities. So the Airbus A320 was the first commercial jet airliner with all digital fly-by-wire which launched in 1987. And Boeing's first commercial airliner with fly-by-wire was launched seven years later with the all-famous Boeing 777. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction into the world of fly-by-wire planes. In an upcoming video, I'll be demonstrating what happens if the fly-by-wire system fails on an Airbus 8020. Make sure to check that out. And here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. And perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.